Father, we bless you. Shabalusa fraska barada kaparianda gebelados. To Jesus be all the glory. Someone is giving God quality thanks tonight. Let it be from the depth of your heart, from the depth of your spirit. It's a miracle service tonight, an extraordinary encounter with the Spirit of Grace. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I welcome you to a miracle service for the month of February. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, all that God has in store for you tonight must be made manifest in your life. Hallelujah. So I want you to give your destiny tonight wrapped and dedicated focus. Hallelujah. The Bible says they heard the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. The problem was not the word. The problem was not even their hearing. Hallelujah. They didn't believe that which they heard, and so they did not see anything. Tonight we are in for extraordinary times in this place. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so I want you to participate. Every part of the service has a package for you. May you receive your full package tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Greet someone by your left and right. Tell them, God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. Listen to what I told you to say. God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. It's too early to be disobedient. God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. One more person. God bless you. Prepare for an extraordinary encounter. You believe that? Shout a loud amen. Please be seated. Please be seated. I welcome every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church. And every time he gathers us together is to do us good. And he will do you good tonight in Jesus' name. I trust God that by the time we are sharing the grace tonight, someone who came here sick will be walking healed and rejoicing. Someone who came here oppressed with all kinds of spirits and yokes, you will watch those chains fall before you in the name of Jesus. And for people whose destinies have refused to open for whatever reason, you will watch those doors fall like Dagon before the ark. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for someone who has been rejected and you have been denied your portion in this season, in the name of Jesus, as you submit yourself to the spirit of grace, suddenly, someone who is responsible for your lifting will be convicted by the spirit to answer you speedily. For someone, somebody who has vowed and said, over my dead body for you to rise. The Bible says, who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass. Listen, when God has not instructed a thing, it doesn't matter what men say. Hallelujah. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongeth to God. Not God and men. He gives men, but it is out of what he has. Of his fullness we have received. There is no man who has anything that God did not give. And the one who gave can withdraw it. Did you be... Are, you, are we in agreement on that? There are many people who became arrogant on account of the things that God gave them. And for some of them, he turned them even to animals as a warning that there is only one monarch in this universe. There are many caretakers, including us, but the earth is exclusively the Lord's. And if the owner of that earth has decided to bless you tonight, woe betides any power that stands his way. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm a firm believer in Jesus. I'm a believer in his word. 
I'm a believer in every provision that is available to the saints in Christ. And I will not rob myself of any opportunity to maximize the blessings of the Lord. Don't choose part of what God can do and leave others. Open up your spirit to receive everything that God has in store for you. Can God heal? Yes, will you receive it? Yes, can God lift? Yes, will you receive it? Yes, can God deliver? Yes, will you receive it? Yes, can God prosper? Yes, Speedily? Yes, can God prosper? Can God favor men? Can God turn around people's stories? Can God roll shame and reproach for men's lives? Can God restore families? Will he do it for you? Do you believe it? Shout a believing amen. If you truly believe this, then I want you to sit back and brace up because the Spirit of God is on a journey with you today that will only leave you an object of praise. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Appreciation to all our international guests, people who have traveled from all across the globe. May God bless you. We love you. And for the many who are connected to you good, in Jesus' name. Now, very quickly, we'll have a function here and then we'll go straight to the business of tonight. I made an announcement last week. Um, that we intend to respond as a responsible ministry um, just to make our own contribution to empower our people. And um, it's only responsible of any leadership and any organization to respond to the realities of the time where people of faith, but we're also a people of vision. Hallelujah. And so I did tell us that. Um, we're making commitments to see how we can um, make our own contribution to empower people. And we're honored tonight to have, for a very brief session, a man that I honor and respect most profoundly. He is a force, mysterious force behind the rising and the sustenance of many by the Spirit in this nation and across the globe. And he's a man who indeed is wearing a coat of many colors. To some, he's a man of God. To some, he's an intellectual par excellence. To some, he's a businessman. To some, he's a leader, a mentor, a father. Any one of these that you call him, you are right. Truly a man wearing a coat of many colors. And um, it's an honor to have him come to give us after a brief media presentation maybe for the next 10 or so minutes, he's going to be leading us and guiding us on what to do as to the empowerment program that we want to introduce. And then afterwards, I'll come back up and we'll be ready to let the devil know that Jesus is still king of the universe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So after the media presentation, which I want you to please pay attention to, rapt attention to the media presentation, the next voice you'll be hearing will be that of Professor John Kennedy Okara, who is a great man of God and also the chairman of the CSS group. Thank you very much. His first time here at Koinonia. We honor you, sir, in the name of Jesus Christ. Media, are you ready for us? God bless you. Excellence is our culture. Creativity is our brand. Passion is our inspiration. Shout hallelujah. Our Lord is good. Thank you so very much. Please be seated. My beloved brother, the man 
that carries double anointing and double grace. Paul the Apostle said in Ephesians 4, 7, he said, grace is given by measure. Sir, I'm really honored to be in this place today. <laughs> this is the first time, in spite of our relationship, for me to enter here. But one thing he knows, I'm always connected to him up to 4 a.m., praying along with him when I go to the chapel. I am really, really blessed to be here today. Few, few days back, I arrived in California to chair a meeting of the International Businessmen Fellowship uh, 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 meeting. And the people said to me, please, when are you bringing Apostle back? <laughs> he ministered at the World Convention, and they are asking me to bring him back to America to minister at our convention. I said, well, <laughs> to get him is not easy. Sir, thank you very much for this privilege. By the grace of God, he has mentioned my name. I served four presidents in this country. Started with President Obasanjo, through to President Buhari before I left government. And in one of the assignments I do, I was nicknamed the number one pilgrimage officer for Nigeria. And because of that privilege, I had to take the president of Nigeria and 14 governors and four deputies, including the senior president now, and so many others to the state of Israel. And we are hosted by my friend, the Prime Minister of Israel. In one of those meetings, he said to us, the food Israel we eat in 15 years, we already have. The governors, the president, everybody was clapping. I decided to go to him and I said, Prime Minister, I think you made a mistake. He said, no, John, Israel, have conquered food security, sustainability through technology. And if you are interested, we would like to go through with you. And that is what gave birth to what I'm about to share in a few minutes. Today, by the mercy of God, it might interest you to know that the only Nigerian president that have gone as a president to the state of Israel was Jonathan, and it was through my instrumentality and by the mercy of God as the head of the pilgrimage commission. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something. Every one of us, we can feel the pain, the pause, food security, sustainability, acute scarcity, inflation, famine, everything you can name it. And we're all lamenting. You can lament from now till Jesus come if you don't do something, nothing changes. Scarcity was what produced prosperity in Egypt. Scarcity was what made Joseph the prime minister of Israel. I mean, Egypt. So whatever scarcity we are facing today, we can conquer it. Let me take you on a journey. Do you know Nigeria, by the mercy of God, is so blessed. God gave us 40 million hectares of land. And we are the highest producer of yam in the whole world. 76% of what the world consumes in terms of yam is produced by Nigeria. Yet, Nigeria is not in the list of 10 exporting nations of yam. What a tragedy. We are doing 65 million metric tons of yam. Ghana is number two. Yet, Ghana is number one in the export of yam in this whole world. Ghana in 2021-2022 earned 38.5 million US dollars from yam export alone. Are you aware that Zakibia is the largest market of yam in the whole of this world? Yet, Benue don't get one dollar from yam export. What a tragedy. Two, Nigeria is the highest producer of cassava in the whole world. If you look at the chain of nations that export cassava, Thailand, that is number three, is the highest exporter of, of, of cassava. Today, we go to China, buy machines for processing of cassava. What are we doing with cassava? Nothing. And we are lamenting. Why will food not go up? Only three states in Nigeria can feed the whole of Africa. I was speaking at the 31st and 2nd uh, 
convocation lecture of food mina. And I said, Niger State is a state with 7.6 million hectares of land. Israel, as a nation, is 23,000 square kilometers of land. That's 2.3 hectares. And Israel, in 2021, earned $16.5 billion from agricultural processing export. And the import, what Israel imported to their country, $3.5 billion. We are shouting, dollar is rising, dollar is rising. Why will it not rise? Once your export value exceeds your import value, what happens? Your dollar will continue to increase. You don't solve a problem by doing nothing. I've come to challenge us today. You saw the video of CSS. I said to them, every single thing we need, we produce in CSS. We are doing more than 32 products in CSS. We train young men. We train young women. We let them know the future you cannot capture, you can't control. Sorrow and pain was what gave birth to Ruth. Ruth, by the scripture in, Rob, in, in Ruth chapter 4, verse 22, brought Obed. Obed gave birth to who? Jesse. Jesse brought David. Jesus came from where? The same lineage. So in the midst of this pain and sorrow, we need men and women like Apostle. He has taken a giant stand. He said he wants to train between 100 to 200 youths to empower them, expose them in agriculture so that when they come, they will define our country. Every single one of us, are you aware? Do you know Nigeria consumes 4.5 million metric tons of fish every year? And yet we are producing 1 million metric tons. Every single one of you seated here can grow fish in your house through just small containers. And you are getting money and you are making money. And you are contributing to the national quota. Look, no government alone can solve the problem of its people. But we have to do something. And that's what he has decided to do. To be able to say, let's do something. Do you know, I went to Norway some time ago. And they said to me, look, Nigeria imports 8 million euro worth of fish from Norway. Norway is very small. Smaller than Abuja. Am I communicating? We have to do something. Otherwise, nothing will happen. So I've come to encourage you and let you know that what he's doing is unusual. And we can start today to see how we can change our mindset. Today, the average woman in the market is counting on dollar. What business do you have with dollar if you are producing what you need? We are chasing shadows. Sir, I really pray that by your step today, many people will come to say, let's key in. We are changing things. We are changing the narratives. People are looking up to us. I was doing a study. Look at, we need out of the 8 million metric tons of paddy we produce in Nigeria, we consume more than 12 million metric tons of what paddy. Now, let me tell you, Lagos State alone produces about 360 million gallons of water. 25% of that water can give us 80% of what we need. Yet, it's wasted. I told them, Sirodo Dam, Sirodo Dam give us 700 megawatts of power. What a nest. You should be doing 24 hours farming. Israel, as a nation, experiences one rainfall in a whole year. Yet, they're able to come. 90% of what they get is recycled. In CSS, we have waste to wealth. Every raw, every waste material, every paper, we convert it to something. We produce paper great for me. Every department is a raw material to the other department. And we have target. Yesterday, I sat through with them all through the night. We are looking at our NPR. Every month, every department will decide what you are doing and you give us your result. And if we can begin to empower youth, people, I believe Nigeria will change. There's always a job for any man on top of his profession. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give Prof a big, big God bless you. Just a few minutes charging us. So um, here's what will happen. Our focus now is first on the workforce and then the membership. So we're looking to empower between one to 200 people. Um, 
Hallelujah. And what will happen is we're partnering with CSS Group. So this is the idea to be able to do a selection. And once we do a selection of one to 200 people, they will train them. When they train them, we'll fund the project. And then they will be able to get something doing. Let's, let's be able to do something about um, the unemployment situation. Crying about it, lamenting about it, is an insult to our understanding of vision. We cannot do everything, but like Prof said, we can start something. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? I believe in practical and responsible Christianity, that your spirituality has to translate to a context that speaks to the development of a nation. We're not just blind fanatics without applicability to our serving God. The wisdom that we receive you fall under the anointing, you rise, that wisdom has to be translated to something. For every of these 200 people now, you imagine with this modern technology, when these 200 people set up their own businesses, if every one of them employs, even if it's five to 10 people, you see that now. It's only in Africa that we laugh at farming. Abroad, when they say you are a farmer, it's like saying you are the owner of an oil mine. It's our ignorance in Africa that has made us throw away that which is very valuable. Not everybody has a car. Not everybody may own a home, but everybody eats every day under all conditions. Even if you fast, you will still break. Am I right on that? Okay, so very quickly, so we get this out of the way. Prof, we're honored and thank you very much for uh, the partnership. Um, So they train, he partners with governments of states and nations to train their people, modern agriculture. And I know many of you here um, were hoping to give you a chance to be able to make meaning out of your life, to begin to earn, live a responsible life. This, when you receive the knowledge, then the blessing and the anointing becomes valuable. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, so here's what will happen. Um, there are forms that they brought we're allowing them handle everything because ethically we separate business from ministry. This is purely empowerment. You are not bringing one naira. You are not bringing one dollar. Everything is my personal commitment to see that. Um, <laughs> hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so there are two things. Number one, I hope and pray that all those who will make it will appreciate this sacrifice. And your thank you gift is that you become prosperous and then you are a blessing to others too. If you can help your family by becoming prosperous, that at the end of this year, you'll be smiling and saying, look what God has done. The way prosperity works is through, number one, the blessing of God upon the works of your hands, and number two, strategic relationships. There's no, there's no gimmicks as to how authentic kingdom financing works. God blesses men financially by empowering the works of their hands. If there's nothing in your hand, then there's nothing for God to bless. Number two, if you ignore strategic relationships such as your relationship with the Holy Spirit, your relationship with a ministry like this, your relationship with great men like this, then you don't stand a chance to rise financially. That is the truth. Hallelujah. So, so that we get this out of the way, immediately after the service, there are forms at the PR desk. We're only opening up for maybe two, three hundred people. Please don't fight. Don't harass our officials. It's free. Make sure you behave yourself. You're a child of God. I need to say this because believers sometimes become very funny when it has to do with issues of money. You will get the form. Then they will collate everything and do the screening. Those who make it, the hundred or two hundred people um, will be notified. And then uh, they will head for their training. After the trainings, once they are done and we know, we release the funds and then you'll be guided on what to do. It is truly my prayer that God will raise kingdom millionaires even through this platform. You believe that? Yes. I don't believe in poverty. I have zero tolerance for poverty. And I'm not apologizing. I'm not one of those who is mad. There's nothing to state. I hate it. It's not of God. I will never encourage it. You cannot remain like that under this grace. It's impossible. 
there's there's nothing to hide there's there's no walking around beating around the bush now zero tolerance for poverty hallelujah what we teach people is a kingdom dimension to being blessed in in the spirit not to endorse poverty you can never be a blessing being poor hallelujah praise the name of the lord so immediately after service please pr people you would reach them and then um we'll be able to get that across to them so that is phase one very quickly let me announce the second phase of what we're doing i was discussing with prof while we're on our way coming um we want to also be able to support a few businesses here that are already ongoing with proof listen carefully hallelujah there are people here who most of the businesses here that between 250,000 to a million naira can make a difference to that business we're trying to see how uh, with no bias with no prejudice uh, of course uh, looking at the workers and the membership this is um, unfortunately we can't do beyond what we're doing now but at least it's good that we do something so um, for this second group of people those you know that you are actively in business not that you are starting number one your business must be legitimate adding value legitimate and adding value i'm informing you now so you don't embarrass yourself legitimate and value adding are we together um and then you are already on and what you just need is to support a little support or to scale immediately after service again so pr protocol you work with pr please so that um, we're able to manage them for these you will only write your name your number and your email um, for those who will get the form for this professional training in agriculture you will be asked to complete the form and then you submit it tomorrow at our other auditorium the daughters of abraham auditorium and then we'll collate all the forms uh, hopefully we'll give one week one week should be enough for that so please pay attention from tomorrow up until Friday, we'll give you the liberty to complete the form so that we collate it and we'll send it to the CSS group. They will now do their screening professionally and then they'll announce to those who are qualified for the training and the funding. But this is to be able to support a few. I don't know how many, but there's no promise that just because you wrote your name, you will be supported. Are we together? so that you don't find any offense we're just doing our bit so let's see how many people that can cover and then depending on the kind of business and the kind of support that will make meaning to the business maybe some 250 some 500 and then max you will not cross a million naira just to add something to your business but before we release amen once we collate the list for this second group while the first group are having their training we collate the list, we'll have a one-day training, compulsory. You will not get one naira from us if you don't come for that training. The training is free. You have a training and then we'll teach you, share a few things, we'll get professionals who help you on how to do your business effectively. Afterwards, the funds will be released with the blessings of the Lord. And um, I believe that we have no authority to command people to give, to tithe, if we don't take the responsibility to, to bless them. This is not a ministry that looks for millionaires and billionaires. We raise people. The proof of the grace that we carry is that we can raise people. Hallelujah. You believe in what we are doing? So we are going to pray over these projects, one and two. And for all of them, after service, please don't fight. Just join the queue. And I'm sure they will guide you. Those with businesses, scalable businesses, um, you write your name and all of that. Those online, we apologize. We may not be able to cater for those outside of this immediate environment. You will receive anointing. I'll be speaking over your life. For those who are here, blessed are your eyes for they see. Blessed are your hands for they reach. Hallelujah. Hopefully as we grow, we'll be able to reach other regions and do our best for Jesus. I'd like you to pray over this project in one minute. Father, we thank you for an opportunity like this. Someone is praying. Thank you for a partnership with CSS Group and this that you are doing, empowering 
many, many people over this first phase of empowerment. Thank you because you are raising producers from these people in this nation, raising people into mechanized agriculture, mechanized farming. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that everyone who should be part of this, you will cause them to not only be part of it, but raise kingdom millionaires and billionaires out of this project in the name of Jesus. And then we pray for all those who are involved in any and all value-adding platforms. We're praying in the name of Jesus as you have given us the privilege to support them as best as we can. Let it also come with your grace that they will be encouraged and they will rise, they will scale, they will do well in their businesses and their endeavors. You have called us to be light. You have called us to be salt. And we pray that you bless us in Jesus' mighty name we pray. One more time, let's appreciate Prof. Thank you so much for the honor, sir. Please be seated. Please be seated. Hallelujah. May your wisdom be... May, I'm thinking of the best way to say it. May the wisdom of God that is at work in your life be such that everyone around your life can see it visibly. If it is true that the wisdom of God is at work in you, I'm praying for you that it will find expression and people will thank God for the gift of you. Yeah. Hallelujah. It was Prof who said, those who live beyond themselves live beyond their time. Profound statement. Hallelujah. You must think beyond yourself. This is one of the things I'm hoping that we learn. For as long as all you have is for you, there is only so much you can eat. There is only so much you can wear. Are we together? There is only so much you can drive. Giving is living. And I'm praying that this would challenge even us servants of the living God to begin to contribute our quota. Let it not be that all we're doing is just collecting, collecting, bring money, bring this. You see, I've told you that when you spend your life empowering people sincerely, it was very easy for people to arise, to stand with you and to support you. People are givers, but they always want to give to noble causes. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Are you ready for tonight? Every prophetic service such as this, every time we're gathered before God, receiving is based on atmospheres. Please listen carefully. Receiving in the spirit is based on the atmospheres that are created. And there essentially in every service, there are at least four atmospheres that allow for receiving. Number one, very quickly, is the atmosphere of praise and worship. In the atmosphere of praise and worship, receiving is easy. Receiving is possible. The atmosphere of praise and worship. Every time you find people praising God, you find people worshiping God, then there is an opportunity for someone to receive any and all spiritual blessings. Are you learning already? Number two, the second atmosphere is the atmosphere of prayer and supplication. Every time the atmosphere of prayer and supplication is created, then the opportunity and the possibility for reception in the spirit is also there. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. What things soever ye desire. It says when ye pray. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. When ye pray. Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. In the atmosphere of prayer. Desires are converted to expectations. Desires are converted to manifestations. In the atmosphere of prayer are you ready for number three the third atmosphere that helps believers to receive from God is the atmosphere of the word when the word is taught not just when the word is present the atmosphere of the word the teaching ministry because the teaching of the word imparts understanding and it alters your mindset it helps you to receive from God this is very important I'm defining for you the atmospheres upon which you receive spiritually. Your first assignment is not to desire to receive. 
your first assignment is to see to it that these spiritual atmospheres are created if these atmospheres are not created like we study in physics and aerodynamics any plane can fly but not under every atmosphere the first assignment of the engineers and all who are involved in flying and aerodynamics is to perpetually simulate the atmosphere that makes for flight this is how it is to in the spirit if you can create the atmosphere for praise and worship then you have created the atmosphere to receive if you can create an atmosphere for prayer and supplication then you have created the atmosphere to receive. Number three, if you can create the atmosphere where the word of God is accurately communicated, you have created the atmosphere to receive. Number four, the atmosphere of the prophetic. When you create a prophetic atmosphere where prophetic speakings can come to your life, you have also created the atmosphere to receive. Men receive in atmospheres of praise and worship men receive in atmospheres of prayer and supplication men receive in atmospheres of the word when it is accurately taught communicated men receive in prophetic atmospheres let me add one more for your understanding the final atmosphere maybe not the final but at least the last for now is the atmosphere of giving and thanksgiving in fact all kinds of giving in the atmosphere of giving there is also receiving because the giver according to scripture is a sower and every time you sow according to genesis 8 22 it says for as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat summer and winter day and night shall not cease shall not cease this is a divine verdict so in the atmosphere of sowing, an atmosphere of giving, and I hope you know giving is not just limited to money. Hallelujah. Thanksgiving, gratitude from your heart unto God is a seed you are sowing. It says, let the people praise him and then the earth shall yield her increase. And even God, our God will bless us. So people who seem to always walk in the harvest, People who seem to always walk in divine rewards. They are not just people who are necessarily extraordinary Christians. They have understood the implication of creating spiritual atmospheres. You find out that someone is perpetually being favored. You find out that someone is perpetually walking under open heavens. I can tell you, it's not because God decided to isolate them and bless them at the expense of another. Because the Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. What has happened is that by mentorship or understanding, they have come into the, the, a comprehension of the implication of atmospheres. So for one, through your prayer and praise, you perpetually create an atmosphere, say for instance, of praise and worship. You find people who praise and worship God all the time, they will seldom be without help. God will always raise help for them. Always raise help. At midnight, the Bible says, you see what Paul and Silas did? The Bible says, they prayed. They created that atmosphere. Added it with the atmosphere of prayer. And this time around, it was not an angel that came. When, when Peter prayed alone, God did not come. It was an angel that came. But when Paul and Silas prayed and added another atmosphere of praise and worship, God himself came, not an angel. And you see the difference in the way deliverance was done. The angel gently opened the doors. God came and scattered the foundations. Hallelujah. Then the Bible tells us that and he, as he taught, the he being Jesus, the power of God was present to heal. Someone's healing was at the mercy of that atmosphere. Once upon a time, the apostle was preaching and there was someone who had been lame, sick, and he looked at him discerning that he had faith to be healed. In the atmosphere where the word of God is taught, the sent word, you see that now? You are able to receive it into your spirit like it is happening to you now. Whilst I'm teaching, you may not even know what is happening to you. But there is an incorruptible seed. You are receiving something. You get up and find out the pain is no longer there. 
You get up and find out you can throw the crush and walk away. Don't ask how it will happen. Just as you do not know the way of the wind or how bones are formed in the womb of how who is with child, so also you cannot know the ways of God. There is an equation to miracles that men cannot explain. We can only explain how the word of God comes to unite with the spirit. But anything beyond that realm is beyond the scope of our intelligence. That one, only God can fill that equation. And I have taught you one plus one plus God is equal to the answer he puts there. One plus one is two mathematically. But one plus one plus God. The only person who can answer that is God himself. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, exalted. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom Till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. I receive, I receive, I manifest, I manifest your power, your power, and your wisdom. Till the nations see Jesus lifted up. Exalted, I receive, I manifest the prayer, your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up, glorified. Sing, breathe, Lord, breathe. your life be a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ I'm speaking over you may your life be a sign and a wonder that when men look at you it will be clear that God's hand is upon you it will be clear that God's grace is upon you evident and unmistakable in the name of Jesus Christ listen there is no doubt when God works with men. There is no doubt when grace rests upon men. There is no doubt when light comes to men. There is no doubt when the Spirit of God works with men. Are we together now? I'm preparing your heart for the many things that you are going to receive because there are many of us your life is ordinary I'm telling you you cannot bring glory to God that way the Bible says we are his workmanship Ephesians 2 10 created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should work in them God has preordained there is a preordination I have taught you here and I will repeat myself for your emphasis that God's goal ultimately is not just to take us to heaven but that your life and my life will eventually be a manifestation of the glory of God. I reckon it says that the sufferings of this present time Romans 8 18 are not worthy to be compared with the glory the glory that shall be revealed in us. The glory that shall be revealed in us. The glory that shall be revealed in us. What is glory? The multifaceted dimensions of God. His wisdom is his glory. His power is his glory. His favor is his glory. Speed is a manifestation of his glory. Restoration is an expression of his glory. Prosperity is an expression of his glory. Everything that can make God, men praise God through you, God is willing to make available in your life. You have to believe this. 
The Bible says, Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness, listen, and his marvelous, his wonderful works to the children of men. There is what God can do to the sons of men that will cause men to praise God. It says, You turn my mourning into dancing, my sorrow into joy. The Bible says that you will be given beauty for ashes. Is that in your Bible? Yes. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, he says, that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Galatians chapter 1, 24, he says, and they glorified God in me. John 15, 8, herein is my father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. John 8, 16, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit. John 15, my apologies, 15, 8 and 15, 16. 15, 8 and 15, 16. That you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain. There is a kind of believer that God wants to unveil to creation. There is a kind of Christian that God wants to unveil. You need to understand where God is going with all this journey. Why does he heal? Why does he deliver? Why does he prosper? Why does he restore? There is an intent behind everything God does. Number one, he does it because he loves you. Number two, he does it because of his namesake. Number three, he does it because by supplying those provisions, you become an expression of his glory, a revelation of his power to your world. So don't just receive healings, don't just receive miracles, don't just receive prophecies, don't just receive impartations. You must know that there is an intent. We launched a project here right now and we told you the intent behind it. To empower people as our contribution to nation building, as our contribution to helping people live decent lives. That is the intent. What is the intent of the Spirit of God showing up in this service? Why did he bring you? Why did he bring your family? What does he seek to achieve? Why does he want to heal you now? Why does he want to turn your mourning to dancing, your sorrow to joy? Why does he want to rewrite your story? Let me remind you again, number one, because God is love. It is in the character of love to give. Love always looks out for the best interests of men. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13. Paul teaching us on the character of love. He says love is patient, love is kind. Is that true? Love hopes all, it believes all things. If it is true that God is love, then it must be consistent with his nature to see you at your best. Number two, the Bible tells us that he does all that he does for the saints and even for creation for his name's sake as a defense to his reputation. There are things that God does not just because of you. He does them as a defense to his reputation. Hallelujah. I did teach us last week, sit down, sit down. I did teach us last week that there are car companies, automobile companies across the world and other products, large multinationals and so on and so forth. When there is a default in their product for the sake of their reputation, in fact, they do not even know who their customers are. Hallelujah. They don't know who is the end user. They just know that there are people in Africa, there are people in Europe, and when they find out that there is a default, for their name's sake, they will recall thousands of cars at their expense. That's how men are willing to defend their name. How much more the King of Glory. I worshipped him, sang so beautifully, flaunting his name. What is in a man's name? His reputation. Oh Lord our God, not just how mighty, how excellent. If your name does not excel, you are not blessed. One of the indices, the portraits of a blessed man is that you must have a blessed name. Genesis chapter 12, 2 and 3. Among the many things that were listed and proposed to Abraham was a great name. If all you have is money, you are not blessed. If all you have is education, you are not blessed enough. Among the many things that symbolize kingdom blessing in a man is a great name. I will make your name great. 
When you are great alone, nobody can be great through you. But when your name is great, people can leverage on that name and also become great. Get my message redefining inheritance. I teach there on five things that qualify to be called inheritance. The Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children. And the first thing I told you that qualifies to be inheritance is your spiritual convictions. You have not blessed anybody from you, biologically or spiritually or otherwise, if you don't transfer your convictions. Number two, your name. The second thing that qualifies to be an inheritance is a transference of your name. That's why Jesus gave us his name. Today in his name, standing in his office, we can leverage on his reputation and exert dominion upon the cosmos. Number three, your relationships that you can transfer your relationships. Is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? The prodigal son had money, but he didn't have other weightier things called inheritance. When he said, give me my inheritance, he was just thinking of money. The money wasted and was spent away because he did not have the mindset of his father he did not have the relationships of his father. He did not honor the name of his father. And money alone ended him with swine. Hallelujah. Why does God do the things that he does in and through our lives? Why does God visit people mightily? Because he is love. He does it for his name's sake. And he does it as part of his commitment to birthing his glory in your life. I like this. When God says he wants your life to be a reflection of his glory, it is not mere talk. There is a commitment component to that talk. So when God says, I want your life to become an expression of my glory, all wise, glory spiritually, glory financially. Are we together? Glory in every aspect of your life. He does not just speak. There are men who speak and cannot show you the commitment. I will bless you. And then after two years, you keep reminding them. And they say, I've not forgotten. Perhaps they have the intention, but they do not have the wherewithal. I have taught you that integrity and ability are the two things that make a man really faithful. If you have integrity alone, integrity is the intention to remain true. But ability is what gives integrity, credence. I can desire to help you, but not have the ability. Thankfully, God has both integrity and ability. This is the reason why we call upon him with confidence. If thou wills, thou can make my son clean. He said, I will. I have integrity. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Profound. If God has spoken, it is within his power to make it good. Genesis 21 verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. There are men who say sincerely or deceptively, and they do not have the wherewithal to make it come to pass. I'm telling you this so that you will know that when God vows that it is your year of exceeding great rewards, if God has vowed that it is your year for rising, it is not a mere talk. The resources from heaven have been coordinated to make sure that that word does not fall to the ground. You believe that? Shout a loud believing amen. amen. That means an individual, my God, can rise from anywhere to anywhere. You may be the least like Gideon in your father's house. And yet when these resources are coordinated, what are they? Let me list them for you. Wisdom, favor, speed, restoration, power, relationships. These are divine resources that insist and ensure that the saints do not remain small. When God speaks, it is within his power. Let me show you what this is called. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 is called all grace. And God is able to make, to coordinate all grace. All grace. What grace? Favor grace. What grace? Wisdom grace. What grace? Restoration grace. What grace? The gift of man. 
all grace towards you give it to us so that ye on the strength of these graces having all sufficiency what does it mean to be sufficient to mean it means to be able to rise to the occasion never disappointing he wants you to abound to every good work but not without his empowerment there are people here right now the limitation you have that is stopping you from being a revelation of the glory of God is that there is some infirmity that Satan has planted in your body. That becomes your assignment tonight to partner with the spirit of grace that I will not go back the way I came. Listen, if you are angry enough, something always happens to men when you become angry. When you are comfortable with situations, you will be shocked that in this atmosphere we'll share the grace and leave and you will leave back disappointed. There are those who have been oppressed by all kinds of satanic, demonic manifestations. Manifestations of darkness orchestrated by the devil to destroy you, to take away dignity from your life. Are we together? Hallelujah. There are people who cannot rise. There are families that cannot excel because there are horns. Remember our scripture? Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18. Son of man, what seest thou? He says, four horns. Horns, symbols of authority. What is the assignment of these horns? The Bible says they have come. These are the horns that have kept down Judah, your praise. Kept down Israel, your promise. Kept down Jerusalem, your peace. Three things they attack. They attack your praise. They attack your promise. They attack your peace. It says, but I have sent four carpenters. Hmm. Carpenters. What does a carpenter do? Rebuild. Rebuild. Sometimes build afresh from nothing. Do you believe tonight? Everything that frustrates your being a manifestation of God's glory tonight must be your project so that you don't you don't waste your time here and sit down clapping and rejoicing celebrating other miracles no they've told me i have some heart palpitation and if this thing continues like that it will kill me i would die early i would not be able to become and i cannot be a blessing therefore because this is inconsistent with god's commitment as revealed in his word it becomes your project to fight the fight of faith how about poverty? Oh, it's happening like that. You better hate it and get angry. Don't sit down and give yourself a flimsy excuse and say it's because they don't like me. Make them like you. There is a reason why people are hated. And there is a reason why people are loved. Jacob, have I loved? And, and um, what's, what's the other one's name? Esau, have I hated? Did you ever ask why? There is something that can happen to men and make men love men. Jesus increased Luke 2.52 in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and men. God and men. Someone must like you somewhere. Enough to invest into your life. Enough to invest into your dreams. Did you hear what I said? Someone must like you beyond your family, beyond your failure. Everybody cannot hate you. Even the devil is not hated by everybody. There are people who love him. You are not that bad. Somebody must love you enough to invest in your life. If the devil is still loved by someone, why should you be hated by all? Say everybody doesn't like your situation is interesting. There are people who have an unapologetic love for Satan, knowing he is Satan, knowing he steals, knowing he kills, knowing he destroys. Notwithstanding, they still love him, and they have a right by choice. I've shared with you here. There are many of you. You are gifted but you are with the wrong audience. You have not yet gotten to the environment that has the discernment to honor you. Joseph interpreted three people's dreams. He interpreted the dream of the wine presser. He remained in prison. They didn't have the wherewithal to help him. He interpreted the dream of the baker 
he remained there but when the king dreamt the same gift though the gift did not improve it was only the audience that changed there are some of you you have been interpreting dreams well done but you have exhausted that training it's time for god to announce you and god does not necessarily need to upgrade the gift he just needs to bring the people who have capacity to discern what you carry and reward you and i pray for you already in the name of jesus christ may the grace that lifts may the grace that announces let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now Listen, announcement is a spiritual thing. Media can only help. Believe me, if that grace has not rested, you will shout around and nobody will hear you. He said, he that has an ear, let him hear. That means not everybody has that kind of ear. You can be shouting and say, I am here. I studied this. I can do this. But the realm of the spirit says we cannot hear you. And that is where the control room is. I have a great ministry. I can heal. Listen to me. I have a, I can, my family is a great family. But the realm of the spirit is not hearing. There is a hear ye him anointing. A grace that rests upon you. And even the deaf will know you are there. Can I speak it over someone? In the name of Jesus. Whatever has silenced your influence. So that your voice will not be heard. I call upon the God of my covenant. May you be heard from today. May you be heard from today. Let the ends of the earth hear you. Let the ends of the earth hear you. my assignment tonight is to threaten that which keeps you down that has vowed that your voice will not be heard john said i am the voice of one crying he was heard when jesus came he was heard one of the things they tried to do to the early apostles was to shut their voice so that they will not it's not only men businesses have voices ministries have voices you can be active and sincere but if that sound in the spirit is not heard your relevance will also die with you i say it again the spirit that is shutting your voice i came by the rod of a higher priesthood in the name of jesus that silence comes to an end Hallelujah. Gifted, but nobody's seen you. Genuinely called, but it looks like you are just going around rigmaroling. Can I tell you this? Believe me, when that grace is on you, it doesn't matter even if you are in a hole, the nations will look for you there. It is true. Rest on me, oh, rest on me, oh, rest on me, the Holy Ghost power, rest on me, let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me, let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. Rest 
Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray? Now hear me please. There are some serious prayers that we want to pray now. And whilst we pray, I'm already seeing visions of fire. When the Holy Spirit reveals himself as fire, he does not just come as a refiner. He also comes to burn everything. Everything in life is heat dependent. There is no material known to man that can survive certain levels of heat. Hallelujah. Now hear me. I taught you that there are five spiritual atmospheres and every time God introduces any of them, you must be discerning because it's time to receive. The atmosphere of prayer engenders reception. The atmosphere of worship engenders reception. The atmosphere of the prophetic engenders reception. You must be sensitive. I want us to pray. Are you ready to pray? This is the ministration oh, as I pray. Who is Josiah? Josiah. I'm hearing the name Josiah. 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 Josiah, I'm hearing the name Josiah. Every altar that has brought families down, every altar that will not allow men and families to rise by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm hearing Josiah. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse those atmospheres now. I curse those atmospheres now. I'm hearing the name Olua Kemi. Olua Kemi. This is a Yoruba name. Olua Kemi. This is what I'm hearing. Olua Kemi. We are going to pray. But salvation has come to this person and this family. Olua Kemi. Who is that place? Oluwa Kemi. This is what I'm hearing in my spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. I'm hearing the name Bridget. 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 Is there someone with such a name? Bridget, run here. Bridget, salvation has come to your family. Oh, oh, oh. rest on me. Oh, oh. rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me, spirit of wisdom. Who is Bridget? Bridget, where are you from? I'm going to pray for you. Shalice Cabrandiga Bariata. We're going to pray. Bridget, I'm praying for you, but the person who is shouting now is in the crowd. Bring the person out. The power of God, just this direction. I'm seeing fire resting on someone. Please bring the person out now in the name of Jesus Christ please bring the person out now I want to pray for you I'd like you to be sensitive we are going to pray Bridget I'm hearing the name Bridget you have a daughter her name is Joy you have a daughter the name of the daughter is Joy I'm not saying the daughter. It's not the daughter I'm calling. It's a woman who has a daughter whose name is Joy. Please, where are you? I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, let me pray for those in front here. I'm seeing attacks on two of you. We are going to pray. But I'm seeing strange attacks. I curse those spirits. Right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out of them now. In the name of Jesus. Out of them now. Oh, oh, oh. Rest on me, oh, oh, oh. rest on me, oh, oh, oh. I'm still seeing these attacks. Every attack on any family represented here by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, I decree and declare by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic, be delivered this moment. Be delivered this moment. Be delivered this moment. Be delivered this moment. 
be delivered this moment. You have been seeing the spirit of death on your husband. This is what God is revealing to me. The spirit of death, you have seen it in dreams and this is targeted towards your husband. God wants me to pray for you before we get into prayer now. I decree and declare, I don't know who that woman is. The spirit of death and this is targeted over your husband. That your husband will die and leave you and with your children and you go through all kinds of pain. And this thing wants to come as cancer. This is what I'm seeing in the name that is above all names. And by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I command that spirit of death masquerading as infirmity. It dies now. It dies now. It dies now. Hallelujah. One, two, three, four, five. Five people will shout now under the anointing. Please, I want you to bring them out. I know there are people shouting, but this is, I saw the number five. Bring them out. Tonight, God is giving you a change of story. Please bring them out. There is a reason why I ask them to come out. Your sister is a commissioner. Your sister is a commissioner. This is what your sister is a commissioner. Is there someone like that? Commissioner meaning those who aid governments. Um, commissioner, I don't know whether commissioner of what, but I'm hearing commissioner. Your sister is a commissioner. Is there someone like that? I want to pray for you very quickly. Please, if I mention your case, just hurry up so you don't waste our time. We are going to pray. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I'm praying right now for that person because I'm seeing something that looks like it's a spiritual thing, but it looks like someone eats and then they begin to have a bloating stomach and that's how they just pass on. In the name that is above all names, anyone digging a pit for you, after the order of her man, may they fall into their same pit. I say it again, anyone digging a pit for your destruction, they fall into that pit. They fall into that pit. They fall into that pit in the name of Jesus. For all of you who are in front here, I stretch my hands towards you. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything that is inconsistent with God's intent for your life and destiny, I stretch my hands towards you now and I declare be delivered forever. Be delivered forever please return back to your seat we're going to pray fire is falling here now when it's time to pray in this prayer you are receiving with all your heart are you ready to pray psalm 3 and verse 1 3 and verse 1 give my people the mic so that we'll pray 3 and verse 1 it says oh lord how are they increased that trouble me Many are they that rise up against me. Psalm 71 and verse 21. We are praying. Someone's destiny is about to change. Read with me. One to read. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me. How many sides? How many sides? Joshua chapter 3 and verse 7. Joshua 3 and verse 7. Read with me. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day... I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses so I will be with you are you ready to pray shout this from the depth of your heart father, father for your glory for your glory increase my greatness go ahead and pray Increase my greatness for your glory. Father, for your glory, increase my greatness. Take away smallness from my destiny. Increase my greatness. Someone pray. Tired of where you are, pray. Tired of where you are, pray. Father, 
for your glory increase my greatness for your glory increase my greatness for your glory increase my greatness greatness is your heritage are you praying Sapakata barakatos, rateka barakatas, rata bataka paskata branda katesh, rates kata barakata barakos. Increase my greatness. Increase my greatness. Increase the greatness of my family for your glory. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. my greatness take away smallness from my destiny haro shabalaka tabakata rakata barakata fraskatesh rapato sobrekata belekata in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray my god something is happening to your spirit man i tell you there is an elevation in the spirit an elevation i'm seeing a ladder this is what I'm seeing, an elevation. You will suddenly go and see that things are changing, changing in your life. Hmm. Prayer point number two. Take it down for me. For the last one month, this prayer point has not left my spirit. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore. You will restore. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore. You will restore. Are you ready to pray? Joel chapter 2. Some of you have lost all kinds of things. Everything to be lost has left you. You have lost opportunities. You have lost relationships. You have lost joy. You have lost strategic resources. It's time to have it back. Joel 2.25 And I will restore to you the years. And I will restore to you the years. God can restore time. Did you hear what I said? God can restore time. I will restore to you the years if God cannot restore time then he is not greater than time if it is he is greater and higher than the realm of time then he must sustain the ability to restore time Jeremiah 30 and verse 17 please give it to us quickly we are praying someone's life is changing for I will restore health unto you those failing organs, those failing body parts. You are just 20, 30, and yet they are telling you that you are losing certain things. It's time to be angry. God does not just restore time. God restores health and vitality. Psalm 41, 1 to 3. Shabaka parakatos yata. Blessed is the man that considered the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Verse 2. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He says, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. He says, thou will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Shout verse 3 together. The Lord will strengthen him in the bed of languishing. And I will make all his bed in sickness. 
God will not allow him to die, not allow him to deplete and famish. Parandos kalibrakatizeta. First Peter 5 and verse 10. I like this one. God is restoring. But the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory, he says, after that ye have suffered a while, what does he do? Make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and then settle you. Say it again. Make you perfect, establish you, strengthen you, and then settle you. Say, Father, I decree, I declare divine restoration of opportunities, of relationships, of resources, of men, of my joy. Now, open your mouth and pray. Restoration. 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 Paris Sabalagadash. Gram Patalaka Barakatos. Rakatas Kotobros. Abrakata Balakata Frascata Balaka. Restoration. 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 Restore joy. Restore years. Restore things. Restore men. Restore resources. Shabaka Paros, Rakata Braskata Vaskabash, Rakata Braskata Balakos, Rakata Brantakabash, Abrakatos Koto Prekatelex. Cry restoration, cry restoration, cry restoration. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Job chapter 42 and verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job how many? How many? As much as he had before. The Lord turned his captivity, but he did not stop there. God restored by giving twice. Are you ready for the third prayer point? We have five in total, but we'll pray three now. And then I'll begin to minister deliverance. This is one miracle service you will not forget in a hurry. Are you ready? Prayer point number three. Genesis 21 and verse 1. It's one thing for God to speak. But it's another thing for his word to manifest speedily. Speedily. Listen. God's word can be sent. But it must arrive speedily. In the parable of the ten virgins. God himself was standing in the place of the bridegroom. It was the delay of the arrival of the bridegroom that made the oil of other virgins to finish. If the bridegroom came on time, all ten of them, they were virgins. Are we together now? It was the delay of the arrival of the bridegroom that made five to suffer loss. So when it does not arrive on time, your resources can pay for it. He says, satisfy me early with your mercy. Genesis 21 and verse 1. The Bible says, And the Lord visited Sarah, as he has said. And the Lord spoke unto Sarah. Now watch this. You would think it just happened the next day. Look at how the Bible summarizes it. But let me break this scripture down for you. The Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. This is a spiritual reality. But the manifestation of this took 25 years before it arrived. Don't you think he just said it and it happened the next day? 
You see, the way God talks and the way he behaves, he expects his word to have come speedily. Whatever happened in the realm of the spirit that prolonged that situation, Jesus looked at the man in John chapter 5 and said, why are you still in this condition? And he said, I have no man. And it made his tragedy become 38 years. The woman who was bent for 18 years, another had hemorrhage for 12 years. Why does the Bible attach numbers to these tragedies? The Bible would have just said a certain man was sick. Abraham and Sarah were barren, trusting God. The man at gate, he had been there a long time. But the Bible is so meticulous, it attaches numbers. Notice when Jesus came, he did not honor the longevity of their pain. He made them know that for all of them, a possibility existed to have received the miracle earlier. Are you ready to pray? Let me give you one more scripture. This one we are going to pray. Because there are some of you, you can't wait again till December. No. The Bible said, this is the day. Not this is the week. Not this is the month. There are days, there are weeks, there are months, there are years. Whichever one your faith defines is what becomes your reality. If your faith is for years, save Johnny. If your faith is for months, save Johnny. He said, give us this day. Give us when? One more time. So God can give men this day. There are times they will say, after five months, on the sixth month of the seventh year, the word of the Lord came. But Jesus himself said, when you pray, remind the Father that it's within his power to give you this day. Give me this, this day. Give me liftings this day. Open a door for me this day. Are you ready to pray? Joshua chapter 21 and verse 45. Give us amplified. We are still praying. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He saved you. I'm charging your faith as we get into this place of prayer. I know him. My God is able to do just what He says He will do. He's got a fulfilled heaven with the promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause He won't give up on you. He's able. John, Joshua 21. 45. Read with me. Ready? One to read. There failed no part of any good thing which the Lord had promised to the house of Israel. All came to pass. How many? How many? Are you ready to pray? Say, Father, I declare a speedy manifestation of every prophetic word that is upon my life. Open your mouth and cry. I declare speedy manifestation of every prophetic word. I declare, someone pray. I declare a speedy manifestation of every prophetic word. Speedy manifestation. Speedy manifestation. You have spoken. Let it come to pass. Today, you have spoken. Let it come to pass. Now, you have spoken. Let it come to pass. Now, you have spoken. Let it come to pass. Now. 
Sapakatos, Rakata Braskata Velakatas. Let it come to pass now. Let it come to pass now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My God, I'm tempted to give you the next one. Just endure. Let me give you the next one. Huh? Are you ready for the next one? John 14, 11. I have to give you the next one. This is why you came. He said, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And if that revelation is what cannot make you believe, he said, believe me for the sake of the results. Believe me for the work's sake. Results can make men believe God and believe you. Did you hear what I said? Results can make men believe God and believe you. We read John 15, 8 earlier on. Herein is my Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Not just fruit, much fruit. Great results. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. Hallelujah. Ordained you to go and bear fruit, 15, 16, and that your fruit should remain. Let me tell you the truth. Do not downplay results in this life. I know that you are here because you love Jesus, but you are also here because you have seen results. Results at the end of any and every argument. You can argue all you can, but not in the presence of results. Hallelujah. What is a prayer? Father, give evidence to my Christian experience. Did you hear what I said? Give evidence. I'm tired of running around telling people I'm a Christian. I'm tired of telling people I love you without proof. I'm tired of telling people I'm serving you without proof. I'm tired of telling people that I'm living for you. Father, give evidence to my Christian experience. Give evidence to my loving you. Give evidence to my serving you. Give evidence to my trusting you. Are you ready? Say, Father. In this season. In this season. Evidence, give evidence to my Christian experience, my Christian experience. Results. results genuine results result. open your mouth and pray bring me into a realm of authentic results give evidence give evidence are you praying all the overflows pray evidence to my serving you give evidence to my loving you give evidence to my live my living for you deliverance to people I don't have the time but perhaps next week 
I will teach you something very powerful. You see, the major challenge with believers in the body of Christ is we do not know that for results to happen in the earth, please listen, there are three things, three conditions that need to be satisfied. Number one is called the finished work of Christ. That reality has been settled in Christ. Number two is the effective appropriation of that which is finished in Christ. Engaging it through faith. Are we together? And then number three, the results manifest. The major challenge with believers is that we think just because realities are finished in Christ, it automatically means the earth eternally has an instruction to give crops and yet there is still hunger on earth. Why? Because that prophetic word, there has to be an appropriation system. The name of the appropriation system is sowing. Every time you sow, you are partnering with prophecy. It is prophetic instruction to the earth plus the farmer's responsibility that is equal harvest. Am I right on that? You, even in a desert, the land was still instructed to produce under a certain kind of condition. That is why in Israel, a desert land, they have food for the next 15 years in a desert land. So, you read in scriptures, by his stripes I am healed. That is a prophetic reality from God's standpoint. You read from scripture, no inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick. The Bible would teach us that we have been called out of every tribe and tongue and nation. These things are not a lie. They are realities as finished in Christ. But you must understand the appropriation system of the spirit. That means the system of converting prophecy to make it manifest. The Bible says the word became flesh. The word became flesh. The healing word became flesh. The prospering word became flesh. The lifting word became flesh. Then it dwelt among men. It is only when it became flesh that it dwelt among men and we beheld his glory. We couldn't see the glory when it was in the realm of the spirit. The Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was already slain. But that reality could not save any man. People still died and went to Hades. Until Jesus came in reality and partnered with prophecy. He says, lo, I come as it is written in the volume of the book. Are we together? When he partnered with prophecy and actually died like the prophet said he would die. It was that experience in partnership with prophecy that produced redemption. So when we minister deliverance and you see people who came believing in God manifesting and God is releasing people. It is not negating what Christ has done. It is en engaging the appropriation system. The reason why the demons will leave is because victory has been wrought already in Christ. I have taught you that the concept of deliverance and warfare for the believer is not engaging to see who wins. It's enforcing the victory that is finished already, but making it manifest here and now. The fact that believers still get sick should tell you that it is possible for an individual to still be under an influence of demons. Because the same package is what delivered everything. It delivered victory over sin, victory over sickness, victory over Satan, victory over the grave, victory over a defeated life. They all came in one package. The fact that believers can still be poor and yet you are not ashamed. You will teach you principles and you will rise. A believer can be sick and he can be ministered to supernaturally or medically. You should not be surprised that a believer may not be possessed but can be greatly influenced by spirits. And I've taught you here that there are three conditions by which spirits engage the saints. One is called disobedience. Two is called ignorance. Three is called covenants. And covenants are transgenerational in their approach. That means you don't have to be there and agree when it was enacted, but you will still be a victim. Who sinned that this man was born blind? Him or his father? This is Jesus' student asking him a question. Today in Israel, 
because they are the physical descent of Abraham. There are many of them that do not acknowledge Jesus as Messiah, yet they still prosper because he said, in, thy, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And they came out as a physical descent of Abraham. Yet in their rebellion, they would look at God and curse him to his face. Yet because he cannot act against his word, they remain a people blessed and blessed forever. These are rules of engagement you need to understand. So don't sit down saying, I, I, I don't believe I can. You are seeing the result, evidences of satanic manipulations. It is not negating your Christian experience. You are partnering with prophecy to establish it so that once and for all there is victory. When victory manifests, everything will show that you are a winner. Medicine will show you are a winner. Your bank account will show you are a winner. Are we together now? I want to pray for you. For as long as I live, I become by the grace of God an agent of appropriating that which is finished in Christ. That for the sake of one person here who has been oppressed by spirits. Can I tell you this? In this walk you see, by the privilege of God's grace, I have seen all kinds of oppressions in the life of people. I can tell you firsthand. Many of you here, ladies and gentlemen, you are standing here not just for yourself, but you are standing for your families. I've seen people who left and went abroad, but because they did not settle these things with understanding and engaging by faith, they remain like beggars abroad. They would give them a job and mysteriously the person would say, I don't like you. You would think it's just some racist thing, but even if you come back home, it's still the same thing. How about families where women are the men and men are the women? You've seen those kinds of families? And they can be genuine Christians. But men in those families never feed their wives. They only marry to be beggars and remain beggars. You will see a woman paying school fees, building the house, doing everything. And the man is there. He will sincerely carry his CV till his children become teenagers. He's not gotten one job after graduation. I told you even Satan is not everybody that hates him. Hallelujah. There are people who never hold money and it stays in their hand. There is a spirit and a curse upon the works of their hands. Give them one billion, they will be smiling. Ask them after one year, where did it go to? They will say something happened. I borrowed this one, he ran away. This one happened and all of that. Come on now. There are people who don't experience delay but they experience what we call um, their pace with respect to time is too slow they build one house in 10 years they use 10 years to finish school are we together now 10 years to finish school the child goes to school and he will repeat one class five times even though it's an intelligent it's a course it's a course a course from the pit of hell I tell you there are people who build but never eat. Just when they're about to eat, they die or something happens to them. I have seen it many times. That includes pastors. They raise people. The moment the people are established and it's the time to bless them, something mysteriously happens and takes them out of their life. I've seen business people like that. There are people here who are part of the rising of many people, but till today they are still paupers and beggars. Spirits for you. Hallelujah. Do you believe what you're hearing? Yes. I've seen people like that. Beautiful lady, wonderful lady, but the day a gentleman looks at you and says, I want to go and see your father. That gentleman will lose his job in one week, lose his sanity, lose every opportunity. And they'll just tell him, run away from this family. There's a spirit in this family. You see, this is what sometimes the prophetic ministry erroneously interprets. As men and women being witches and wizards. They may not be witches and wizards. But for sure, there are spiritual operations within those families that with intelligence, they need to be delivered from. Hallelujah. I know people as a man of God. I desire to bless them. I remember looking at them and said, I will bless them mysteriously in a way I cannot understand. I'm not that forgetful, but I forgot to bless them. Mio, a man of God. And the person is saying, what kind of spirit is this? What is pursuing you determines how you run. 
Hello? Hmm? It's not the same thing that is pursuing everybody. Oh. Others who they've paid the price for you. Some you are the first person to rise in your family. There is no mention of the word honor or dignity in your family. There's no such thing. Now, not to get you, please don't feel offended. But there are people in families who never marry until they get pregnant outside. That's the condition. For as long as you say, I want to get married first. No, that spirit will not let you be. I know people who spend 15 years abroad and return back to Nigeria and even the key to a car, they could not have. They called all their classmates and their classmates are now exalted. And they are not comparison. What is it that stops the glory of God from manifesting? How about families that always kill those who become the lifters in those families? Have you seen it happen? That just when someone just, I just got a job. I just got an opportunity. My stomach, my head, and the person is dead. I came angry tonight in my spirit. Because someone, I, by the privilege of God's grace, Sir, I've had the honor of taking care of a lot of families. I have seen 25-year-old widows with four, five children. How long did the man live before dying? Absolutely nothing. And they leave those people 25, 28, four, five children. Hallelujah. How about your destiny helpers forgetting you? You watch them on TV making pledges to people. And yet you say, Uncle, just to remind you that I'm still here. I say, okay, you, I will remember. Immediate, once it is your own, they forget. Are you ready for the book of remembrance to be open? Just when they are dropping your CV on a man's table, someone will come and use your CV to wrap food with it. They are considering yours. They say, please pass me a piece of paper and it's your CV they carry and wrap food with it. And you sit down and you are shouting, thinking your CV is in the office, whereas it's in the bin somewhere. He said, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Do you know why? He said, lest he dips his hand in iniquity. I've seen people who love God. They are not lazy but they live their lives begging. They never get to a point where they can live a decent life. No. They beg, their wives join them begging, their children join them begging, their grandchildren join them begging, their entire lineage lives by begging. Shout no way. No way. One more time, shout no way. no way. Whatever you permit, whatever you tolerate remains in your life. I'm saying this because everything that is not of God, he must let you go. Now, there are, there are families where the parents and the elderly people remain, but the children die leaving the parents. You see a family full of old people with no young man to help them. He said, I write these things to you fathers. I write these things to you young men. I write these things to you children. This is what makes a complete generation. There must be elders, there must be young men, there must be children. No generation is safe without elders. No generation is safe without young men. No generation is safe without children. When Satan wants to suspend continuity, he looks for one of these three. If he kills the elders, the young men will become foolish young men because no counsel. When he kills the young men, there will be no continuity because the elders will pass on one day and the children will not have a way to be trained well. When he kills the children, you will now see the spirit that was in Pharaoh and he was negotiating the exodus of God's people. Let some go and let some stay. And Moses said, you are joking, all of us, our wives, our children. In this place tonight, there are elders. In this place tonight, there are young men. In this place tonight, there are children. In fact, in this place tonight, there are babies. Our commission tonight is everybody must be free. Yeah. There is nobody that is too young to be free. And there is nobody that is too old to be delivered. In one minute, I'd like you to pray. Every first time down my destiny, you must let me go now. You must let me go now.
you must let me go now you must let me go now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now very quickly I'm about to minister the deliverance power of Jesus in the next few minutes we'll watch the wonder working power of Jesus but just quickly I'd like us to honor he came in while I was teaching I didn't want to interrupt the teaching Reverend Edward let's bless him house on the rock Enugu thank you so much sir hallelujah and then um, where is she I, I forgot to introduce her, the wife of the um, German ambassador to Egypt. Is she here? God bless you. Let's give her a big God bless you. Thank you. So good to see you. Hallelujah. Amen. Please be silent, everybody. If you are sitting, stand. If you are sitting, stand. Prophetic instructions are powerful. Because contained within them, as foolish as they may sound, is the power of God. I want you to please stand. Ushers, I want you to start bringing out the people who the power of God rests upon. I'm ministering deliverance now. What is deliverance? Separating you from the spirits that plague you. Separating you from the conditions also. Not just spirits. Usually I will ask you to shout and you will shout. But God is telling me, be still and know. This is why I said, just stand and keep quiet. Bring them out. You see, the way God walks is very mysterious. Sometimes it may not make sense. Yes. There are individuals and families right now. It's the fire of the Spirit fishing out families whose destinies have been tied down. Yokes, curses, altars. Please bring them out. No, you will not be able to stand it. You don't know what grace you are under. Please bring them as quick as you can. All the overflows outside. Hmm. These things happen so that you will fear God in a way that God is not a man. If God can say a thing like this and do it, then you will believe every prophetic word he brings on you. Please help the ushers. If they are limited, anyone close to them, let's just save time. There's a reason why I ask that you bring the people out. You're not shouting. You're not doing anything. You've done the prayer. Now I'm praying for you. Mm. Yokes. Altars. I'm seeing fire like, like smoke rising. Rising from things that look like stones. The Lord is showing me a dark shadow. Shadow that has rested on families. Some for decades. And the Lord is saying this is the shadow that has covered the glory of many families. And the Lord is lifting it right now. He's lifting it right now. Bring them out. Lifting it right now. Yeah. Lifting it right now. Please bring them. Now I'm seeing chains tying the feet of people. Feet means your movement. The Lord is taking away delay. I'm seeing delay. I'm seeing the number 25. Families, please bring them out. Delay. The spirit of delay that has tied down destinies. Ta-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-
Bring them out. Nakasoni haka. Abana ya fi kodi ya eh zaka. Abana ya fi kodi ya shine zamba. Ta ra 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 I want to pray very quickly. You are still bringing a few more people out now. I'm seeing something tied around the stomachs of people. And I'm wondering what is this is? What, what the meaning of this is? And the Spirit of God is telling me that this is enchantment. This is witchcraft over many. It came through dreams and it has tied down many. This thing started from your dream and then tied your destiny down from seeing yourself in secondary school to writing exams that never finish to things holding your destiny down right now be released be released bring them out be released be released by the power that raised christ from the dead by the power that raised christ from the dead by the power that raised christ from the dead Hale shale gevara so benekata. Now hear me. Every family under any cause, cause of untimely death, cause of failure at the edge of breakthrough. Now you are going to shout Jesus with that one loud shout. Those altars must give way now. Are you ready? One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Be released. Be released. Be released. Be released. Your family. Be released. Your business. Be released. Your destiny. Be released. Everything that concerns you. Hallelujah. What has buried the name of your family? The statement, Ichabod, that it cannot even be heard again. A family that was once great, known for greatness, but it looks like the devil has sat on your destiny. I'm talking to three people by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus right now, Kadevata, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I declare, may that fail. May that veil be torn right now over your family. May that veil be torn right now over your family. May that veil be torn right now. Every month, you must treat sickness, mysterious sicknesses, eating up your finances, eating up your energy, your vitality. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but by the power that raised Christ from the dead, that demonic authorization over your body is cancelled now. Cancelled now. The Lord is showing me a woman. You've not been able to meet your husband abroad because they've denied you visa. I don't know if there's such a person. I've prayed for a number of people with those cases, but the Lord is speaking to me about one. You've not been able to go and meet your husband. You are legally married, but you are unable to go and meet your husband because you've been denied again and again. And this has caused a lot of tension in your home, wherever you are, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. In the name that is above all names, we consult the greatest consular general and we declare by the spirit of the living God that this time around, may favor speak for you. May favor speak for you. May favor speak for you. I'm seeing someone here, your brother currently has been kidnapped. Your brother, you are aware, he's been kidnapped. 
you are trusting God for his release. I don't know if that person is in this place, else I'm going to speak. Your brother, this is what God shows me in a vision, is part of those that were kidnapped until now. He's not been released. In the name of Jesus, I use this vision as a point of contact to everyone who has been kidnapped by wicked men, by the power that raised Christ from the dead this week, not next week, this week. In the name that is above all names, we declare their release now. We declare their release now. We declare their release now. For everyone who is in front here brought by the Spirit of God, I decree and declare every spirit that has held you down, God brought you by himself. Right now be released. Right now be released. I decree and declare that as you rise, you step into a range, a, a level of strange testimonies. Strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Return back to your seat rejoicing. How many of you are trusting God for supernatural jobs? Just lift your hands and put it down. Let me see. If you don't believe, keep your hand down. You are trusting God that God between now and March that God can open a stranger. Let me see your hands. I want to pray for you. The prophetic is very powerful. And that includes those from several nations. You've heard testimonies. You can stand for your brother. You can stand for your son. You can stand for your daughter. You can stand for your spouse. I decree and declare. I don't know who is trusting God for a job. For you, for your family. Or a change of job. Because some of you, what you are doing is not really a job. Anything that steals your spiritual life destroys your health, causes enemies and multiplies your sorrow is not from God. Therefore I decree between now and the next one month in the name that is above all names and by the power of prophecy from the east to the west the north to the south, Nigeria and beyond, may God give you a strange testimony. May my God give you a strange testimony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel stirred in my spirit to speak over the overflow outside. The overflow outside. Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I'm praying for everybody. Everybody can tap. But I just sense in my spirit to speak over the overflow outside. Outside. Media, if you can help me. Let me speak over the overflow outside. Those outside, I want you to lift your hands. I don't know why God is asking me to speak Perhaps it is to connect with you to let you know that distance is no barrier. And it doesn't matter up basement, all the other overflows, you can connect by faith. But I'm speaking particularly to those outside. Lift your hands. Those outside, I want to pray for you. And I want you to believe by the faith of the Son of the living God that what God will do in your life will surprise you beyond your imagination. Father, in the name that is above all names, I pray for my people outside. Lift your hands and believe. This is not entertainment. Believe. Believe. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. He said, believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. I pray for you. Everything that will make you laugh and celebrate between the next two weeks, whatever it is, by all godly means, I declare, may it happen for you. Everything that will make you celebrate. Ah, Sarah said, all who hear this will rejoice with me. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Between now and the next two weeks, those outside, but it applies to everybody. Whatever God must do to make you laugh, I declare may it happen speedily. Speedily. If it's a job, may it happen speedily. If it's your visa, may it happen speedily. If it's your house, may it happen speedily. The Bible says, despise not prophesyings. Despise not prophesyings. Still keep them. I'm speaking to them. I'm speaking to them. Why God is putting it in my heart to speak to them? I'm speaking to those outside. Sometimes God moves like this to comfort us. To help us see and know that distance is no barrier. Media, are you helping me? In the name that is above all names. 
the oil of favor the oil of favor that can come upon a man's head that can come upon a man's hand that can come upon his feet and rewrite his story I stretch my hands first from outside and then to all connecting and to those connecting across the globe in the name of Jesus listen I tell you with all humility and with every sense of regard to you and to God I know what favor is I know how it works I have seen what the favor of God can do this ministry is evidence that God's favor can rest upon a man it is such as I have in the name of Jesus to those outside and whoever is tired of struggling moving from pillar to post and things are not working in ministry in finances I pray for you receive the oil of favor 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 everyone shout this after me say father every curse every enchantment every demonic arrangement orchestrated by men and by spirits against my life and my destiny let it be destroyed now open your mouth in one minute and pray every enchantment every curse orchestrated against my life against my advancement against my health against my prosperity by the blood of the eternal covenant be broken be broken be broken be broken in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now everyone please listen to me thank you for your patience and your endurance but I want to show you something every demonic oppression upon the saints depends on a certain kind of belief system no matter what kind of spirit is sent to you that spirit is helpless until a certain belief system is formed in you it is the union of that spirit and your belief system that equals your tragedy did you hear what i said satan is as powerful in your life as the limitation of your belief system so the primary assignment of spirit is not to oppress is to first manipulate your understanding or build a garrison around your wrong belief system so that regardless what truth comes for your liberation you do not sustain the intelligence to understand it there is no spirit that is not at the mercy of your belief system even God as mighty as he is is limited by your belief system he said let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus he says they limited him in the wilderness they limited the Holy One in the wilderness how do you limit the limitless God I want to show you something powerful send any kind of spirit spirit of death spirit of delay spirit of retrogression untimely death poverty all those spirits will come and mark time at the gate of your mind there is a certain mental component that empowers their entry or keeps them forever did you hear what i said so the bible says no weapon fashioned i used to think the weapons are the arrows that fly by day these weapons are mindsets they are fashioned based on your weaknesses so satan brings your background brings your failure brings poor or ill mentorship and uses it to fashion a weapon that weapon becomes the access point for spirits so no matter the kind of deliverance you go through once that software that faulty thinking is still there that deliverance session was only a waste of time 
because all he needs to do is to touch any triggers in your life and it will make you open the door through your belief system anger jealousy lust pain wrong memory fear all of them are triggers and any one of them can bring you back to that mold and the spirit will find its way again so complete deliverance is not just casting out demon spirits are we together but a reorientation through the teaching ministry that now gives you a superior understanding a mindset that is always superior that way you close the door permanently over those spirits in fact in order of spiritual priority i rather teach you the truth that to minister deliverance for you because once that mindset is altered the spirit itself becomes unconducive the bible says when spirits leave men they go through deserts and from the desert there was nobody to cast them by themselves they left the desert and came back to the man light how forcible are right words they can force spirits out and force prophecies in this will be your final prayer are you ready to pray once you pray i'll just speak over this um make sure immediately we're done praying or whilst we're praying please bring out your prayer request everybody and for those who have not written your prayer request let me give you a minute we write prayer requests here as an act of faith if you care please write maybe sit for a moment i'll allow you to pray while you are sitting so you can write That you are sitting doesn't mean you will not pray you will pray oh. so just it's not a license men ought always to pray let me give you a minute to write write because everything you're writing will come to pass speedily hallelujah speedily hmm. A lady is going to start laughing by the spirit. It's not careless laughing. The laughing is a symbol of joy and victory that has come to her family. It's a holy laughter. It's not something that is mechanical. It's by the spirit. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory shall not depart from the tent of the righteous i just saw this in the spirit and i'm speaking it unto that person and unto that family that laughter that has begun all through this year it will not cease in the name of jesus are you writing please write nobody reads your prayer request so you are at liberty to write it's, it's, it's an act of your faith releasing it those outside all the overflows please write connecting online Go ahead and write. You can send it. We're about to pray. God answers prayer. He does. Does. He does not just hear prayer, but he answers. Call upon me, he says, and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Let me give you the final prayer. We're going to be praying and challenging according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4 NIV. 2 Corinthians 10 for NIV. We're challenging by the light of God's word every faulty belief system, every wrong way of thinking that is empowering failure, defeat, attacks, delay, limitations over our lives. This will be our final prayer point in this miracle service. NIV says the weapon we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, it says they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Verse 5 says we demolish arguments, every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought. Every what? We take captive every, you can take thoughts to captivity and bring them or make it to the obedience of Christ. You are going to pray now whilst you are seated. Shout this loud, shout this clear. 
whilst you are doing that you will multitask by passing your prayer request you may pass it to the right person extreme right or extreme left so it makes it easy for the ushers you'll see them picking up the request are you ready go ahead and pray say father I challenge come on shout like a believer say father I challenge by the light of God's word every faulty belief system every wrong way of thinking that is empowering failure empowering defeat empowering attacks empowering delay empowering limitations over my life and destiny I bring it to captivity now go ahead and pray every limitation by the light of God's word someone pray someone pray pray by the light of God's word every thought every mindset mindset that came from the past mindset that came from wrong mentorship mindset that came from your previous failures mindset that came from culture mindset that came from your limitations whatsoever they may be sponsoring failure sponsoring defeat sponsoring attacks delays limitations in life and destiny i bring them to captivity by the light of god's word hallelujah hallelujah Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says, And I will give you pastors or shepherds after my heart, according to my heart. It says they shall feed you. Why do they need to feed you? What are they feeding exactly? Number one, they are feeding your spirit. Number two, they are feeding your mind. What does it mean to feed your mind? To use the word of God, word applicable principles, to begin to rewrite on the software of your mind reprogramming your understanding giving you a mindset that is pro victory pro christ pro destiny pro prosperity pro authority are we together this is the assignment of the teaching priest so you can come as you are but you must submit yourself not just to the miracle working power you must submit yourself Everything in your life eventually reflects your mindset. Remember when I'm teaching on mindsets, I teach you that sometimes many of us give loved ones our clothes, maybe used clothes, you can give them as a gift. How many of you see that you may have worn a white cloth, maybe a white shirt, white trouser for a few years and it's still looking new because of your mindset. You give that to some cousin or somebody somewhere with a low level thinking after one month you look at that same shirt you've used for years and you want to run away do you know what has happened the mindset was transferred to that cloth carry a ceo in his office i have taught you this put him at the gate of the company and carry with all due respect many of the especially the security that are ill-trained just there to serve basically reverse them and put them to sit on the seat of the manager for one week the first thing that will happen is that the man will most likely destroy that office because of careless use he will steal everything there and tear every paper use it for whatever finish every food every refreshment in the fridge and then people will stop coming to the office there because the ceo at the gate will start inventing an easier system he will first invent a system that shields him from heat and then his cautiousness that sense of courtesy will make all who are coming to look for the man in the office to stop at the gate there because their problems will be stopped at the gate i'm saying that to tell you that what distinguishes people essentially it's not just the clothes they wear it's not just their communication is their mindset an ambroba is a mindset a man of god is a mindset did you hear what i said a failure is a mindset a ceo is a mindset you don't necessarily call a body a ceo when that body dies and falls to the ground you don't call it a ceo it is the mindset you are calling an apostle 
Is the mindset you are calling a billionaire? Is the mindset you are calling a millionaire? Is the mindset you are calling a failure? So when God gives you a new name, the new name comes with a new mindset. You see that now? For you cannot put new wine in old wine skin. The problem is not the wine. The problem is the wine skin carrying it. There are times that God does not want to manage your mindset. He wants to take it away from you totally and bring something new. I'm saying this to some of us because your blessing tonight for many of us is beyond the miracles and all that you have received. The prophetic words that has come upon you as powerful as they are. It's important for you to know that God is calling you to a journey of radical transformation. Editing by the Spirit methodically, line upon line, precept upon precept. It's time for you to re-examine the entire span of your belief system. It doesn't matter how long you've held on to them. If they have not sustained the ability to produce Christ and his glory through your life, it's time for you to sustain the courage to look at them and begin to edit them by the Spirit. And this is our assignment, to guide and midwife that process of transformation for you according to the measure of grace that we've been given. So that you don't just shout amen and then every blessing that wants to rest upon you, the requisite mindset your hand in the spirit is your mindset did you hear what i said your hand in the spirit is your mindset if i bring out one million naira and i say take you will not take it with your feet you will not take it with your head you may bow your head to say thank you but it's with your hand you will receive it in the realm of the spirit the agency for receiving is your mindset so if god says take and your mindset is not prepared to receive it the blessing will stay as a prophetic reality and never manifest in your life it matters not just that you receive prophecy it matters that you endure sound doctrine to the end that your understanding be thoroughly furnished there is a kind of mindset the anointing is looking for there is a kind of mindset favor is looking for are we still together there is a kind of mindset speed is looking for there is a kind of mindset you are trusting god to move from say 1000 membership to 10000 to 20000 it doesn't just come because of you your age your size no there is a mindset that can host that level of glory the bible says there are many stars and that even among the stars one differed from another in glory God wants to do much in the lives of many of us here I perceive but there is still a faulty understanding our belief systems our ignorance as to knowing the ways of God and how the systems of the kingdom operate that is the reason why we are here every time we grant access to our teachings the reason why we do these things is so that you will be able to receive the word of God now having said this let me use the opportunity and give two very strong warnings. It just came to my spirit. I want you to listen. Koinonia Global, Body of Christ. Um, focus on me now for the next one minute. Two things that just came to my spirit to say very strongly. Number one, I'm announcing officially to you all that you must beware of scammers. Beware of fraudulent people, especially those on the internet. As a person, I'm not on any social media platform. Are we together? No, I'm not. So if you've been interacting with any Joshua Selman online, no matter how kind he sounds, that is a scammer. Number two, there is no orphanage project we are running somewhere. I think that's the popular deception. Many of you have lost maybe tens, hundreds, perhaps thousands of dollars to this network of scammers online who parade to be Joshua Selman I'm saying it officially there is no we are a responsible ministry thank you my dear media people I'm not on any social media platform number one number two it will be foolish number one I don't even have that time the person who has the time to be talking to you all the time you see that must be a foolish Joshua Selman Are we together? This is the wise one. There was a Jesus in the Bible called bad Jesus. A wrong and foolish one. 
So you need to know how to be wise. The Bible says the word of the Lord is perfect. The laws of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. Then it also makes men wise. So some of you have become victims to these scammers. If you're currently in any discussion with anybody, and some of them are so bold, sometimes they even come to the official page. While the service is going on like this, they just say, I am this one. And because you see, people are desperate for results. And so they just believe. They first start with a semblance of compassion. They try to talk to you and say, it looks like you've been depressed. You say, it's true, you are crying. And then the next thing they say, call this number. And then it all ends with giving money. Sometimes they may even claim to pray genuinely. It is a lie. I hear that there are people who have even gone to the extent of cutting my pictures to, you know, put in a lot of things and make it, look, you, you should know what we stand for, right? Social media is a noisy place. Everybody has a right to say anything. It's important for you with understanding to be able to know what we can do and what we cannot do. So I'm saying this officially. This is very important and probably media, you may want to crop out part of this if, uh, and, and then put it online and let people know if you are dealing with any Joshua Selman, particularly anybody asking you to bring money or bring this or bring whatever, especially for an international family, you are dealing with liars and scammers. This is very important. Hallelujah. Desist from that. Disconnect from them. Every communication from this ministry, we're improving all our communication channels to make sure that we're effective and responsible enough but we have the details at the end of the service we'll make sure the official details every major department that corresponds with a community they have a line that you can reach and we're replicating this for all our other expressions this is very important please bring the request while i'm making this announcement and then number two the second uh, very important announcement uh thank you jesus this really skipped my spirit i think i would have been sad if I didn't have this now, this is particularly for YouTubers and all who use my content and my teachings. It's important for you to know that we give unreserved access to use this content based on the understanding that everyone who uses them desires, number one, to preach Jesus and desires to be an extension of this spiritual value that we're sending to the nations. Let me make that very clear. And there are many who have held on to that conviction, thankfully. And you would notice, number one, I have never, I don't even know those people, most of them, that, you know, there are people who today, through the platform of the social media and these teachings, God has prospered them. And to my joy, I am happy knowing that whilst they are serving the purposes of Jesus. God is blessing them. I'm very delighted knowing that. But I need to say this. Every abuse of content, there are many people, and the social media is unfortunately a very crazy place. People know that every time they drop my picture or content anywhere, it doesn't matter what they are saying, it seems to command the attention of people. And it's unfortunate the abuses that have happened all over the internet. You see that now? People crop out messages and twist them into all kinds of things. They become objects of division, objects of confusion, and all kinds of things. And um, we are a responsible ministry, and I owe it to you to tell you this. Particularly for those, anyone at all, with no restraint, with giving people access, you know, to be able to let people reach these teachings. Because no matter what, how much I teach, there's a limit to which I can get the people to listen to. And so, as many who can help to push these things, it's a welcome development, provided their intent is to help people find Jesus, find meaning, and find purpose. For those who are obsessed with coining every kind of thing, by the time your desire to drive traffic for the purpose of profit becomes greater than or the only motivation Please take away my content from your nonsense. Hallelujah. We are responsible people who love Jesus, but there are all kinds of abuses. And, and as for me, it's, it's not a concern for me, but for the innocent, sincere people who sometimes they see your pictures, they see your videos, and they are rushing there to find Jesus, to find life. 
And here are people who they don't mind putting anything. All they want is traffic so that they receive payments from YouTube. If you hurt people, you tell lies, you manipulate so that you have the money. The Bible says the cause of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. Are we together now? Yes. So you must respect the effort, the energy, the discipline, the consecration, the spirituality that brings these teachings. And I want to thank many of you who have become partners in the spirit and in progress. And through your various platforms, you've helped people to know Jesus, to know what God is doing. May God bless you and lift you in Jesus' name. And I'm happy that God is prospering you while you are doing it. At least it's, it's better than stealing. It's better than all kinds of things. There are people today who have built houses through these contents, bought cars. I am happy knowing that from what God has given us, we are not only blessing people spiritually, but people are finding even financial meaning to their lives. But I'm putting a very strong warning and a strong disclaimer. Abuses must stop. Hallelujah. If you're doing your thing online, you can do your thing, but take away Koinonia and its content from your madness. Don't use our content as an object to cause division in the body of Christ, frustrate the effort of believers to grow, and so on and so forth. It is against our values and it's against what we stand for. Hallelujah. So it's very important. If you are pro-Jesus, if you are pro-healing, if you are pro-destiny, you are a decent person seeking to help people find meaning with their lives. And God helps you to use your social media platform. Then may God bless you. You're welcome. Let the teachings through you bless others. And through it, bless you and lift you. It's with all joy. But make sure that you do not become a, an agent of anarchy, confusion, causing trouble and confusion, especially to younger believers who are growing. It is unfortunate how the kind of nonsense that the social media sometimes and people's desperation for a name for fame and they do all sorts of things so let this stop we're in a serious business of letting the nation see jesus and all those who have access to this content you must promote them responsibly and make sure that at the end of it people find jesus don't twist messages pick one part put another part to speak a lot of things and 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 uh, please be warned don't do that the cause of the lord is in the house of the wicked hallelujah and when we give disclaimers like this that is not all we can do we are responsible people who love the body and um but i want you to know that we have enough influence to produce any effect that needs to be produced so please be warned um silence and silence and maturity should not be mistaken for weakness hallelujah Great people do not tear down others. Great people are builders. Those who tear down are weak, insecure people who are trying to find meaning for their lives. The cure is to find meaning for your life through the word and in destiny. Okay? So I needed to say this. This is very important. I think that's a good announcement um, to have made. Praise God. Lay your hands whilst you are seated. Our time is fast spent. Let me speak over those who need healing. Our time is gone, but I have to do this. We may not take testimonies tonight, but lay your hands. I want to pray for you. The stage is always yours every week. You can register for your testimonies. Those online, everyone, please lay your hands. You're standing in for someone in the next one minute. I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, the one who died and resurrected in power and glory. Thank you for the power to heal, the power to bring life even to the sick. You gave us this noble instruction to heal the sick while we preach the kingdom. And Lord, in honor and obedience to that call, I stretch my hands right now over your people spread across this auditorium and its environs outside the many who are following online and the many who will hear this i'm praying in the name of jesus that every spirit that is responsible for infirmity every spirit responsible for sickness diseases of any and all kinds by the power that raised christ from the dead i cause the operation of those spirits from your body this moment in the name of Jesus. Right now I stretch my hands, be healed. Shout a believing amen.
Headaches be healed right now. Eye conditions be healed right now. Heart conditions be healed right now. Blood conditions be healed right now. Bone conditions be healed right now. Organ failures. Let there be a brand new, a reproduction of new organs. In the name of Jesus. Respiratory problems be healed now. Tumors and cancers be cursed now. Fibroids, we curse you now. Gastrointestinal problems be healed now. Reproductory problems be healed now. Urinary problems be healed now. Respiratory problems be healed now. Digestive problems be healed now. Neurological problems be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ, back pain be healed. Lumbar spondylosis be healed. Joint pains be healed. We change genotypes right now. From SS to AA. From AS to AA. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ear conditions be healed now. Every prolonged pain in your body be healed in the name of Jesus. Now whether I mention your case or not, anyone appointed to death by sickness, those following from hospitals, clinics, everywhere, be healed right now. I stretch my hands and I declare, let the healing power of Jesus from this ground, through the airwaves, let it flow to you right now. I speak to someone, you shall not die. Your health will not deteriorate. It is cancer that will die. It is HIV that will die. It is tuberculosis that will die. It is pile that will die. In the name of Jesus, every mental health situation, right here in Nigeria, across Europe, America, Canada, Asia, be healed right now. Autism, be healed right now. If you are here, you came with a wheelchair, you came with a crutch, or some walking aid for your feet, your hands, I declare be healed right now. For every and any infirmity, here at this miracle service, we pronounce you healed. We pronounce you whole. We pronounce you perfected. In the name of Jesus. You will search for that pain and not find it again. You will search for that infirmity and not find it again. I declare restoration to your health. Now rise up please stretch your hands towards this request. Stretch your hands please towards this request. Are there any requests yet to come? Please stretch your hands and begin to make faith declarations in one minute. These Egyptians I see today, I will see them no more forever. Someone full of faith is praying. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to bow my knees in one minute and lay my hands over these requests as a point of contact while you pray. Make faith declarations that in the name of Jesus Christ, this comes to an end. Every oppression, go ahead.
mighty name of Jesus, I decree and declare over you, bowing my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that every testimony that needs to come out from this request, beginning from tonight, may you begin to hear them. Amen. Beginning from tonight, may you begin to receive them. Amen. Every human agent who must partner with prophecy to make for the manifestation of this request, I decree and declare, may the Lord raise them and bring them to you. Amen. Every death sentence here represented is cancelled. Every issue of debt, financial issues plaguing people, it comes to an end permanently. Amen. Whatever it is that you've written here as an expectation that is consistent with the will of God, I release my faith with you even on this altar and I declare return rejoicing with your testimonies. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Prophetically, I stand upon this request and I decree and declare that these Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more forever. No more forever. No more forever. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to lift your hands as I speak over you. Prophecy is the final or the second to the last atmosphere that is created for reception. Father, I decree and declare over your people shame and reproach from this day comes to an end forever comes to an end forever i decree and declare wherever the helpers of your destiny are whether they are in abuja in lagos in the north the south east west europe america far west wherever they are between now and the end of the month, the month is not ended yet. I gravitate them towards your destiny. Every long standing issue, you have prayed, you have fasted, it has refused to change. I release my faith with you and I declare this is the season of change for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord give you a new song. You will sing a new song. You will sing a new song. You will sing a new song. For someone, God will take away sleep from your helpers like Ahasuerus and make them open the book of remembrance towards you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whoever must come into your life for your rising, Wherever they are, may they come speedily. Everywhere your job is, may God locate you and take you there. Everywhere your finance is for this season, can I pray against the spirit of debt and borrowing? In the name of Jesus, anyone who is in a financial situation now, I give you one month by prophecy. May the God of all grace bring you out of it now. Every family that has not risen, you have not seen the hand of God, the testimony of God helping men. From your father to your mother to your siblings to you, every one of you in concert receives strange testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus, the gift that the Lord has put within you, I stir it up by the anointing. And I declare, may it bring you profiting. 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 What you have been looking for, I command it to start looking for you. Ah, 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 hear this one. What you have been looking for, may it start looking for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every confusion in your life, May the spirit of grace bring clarity to your life now. Everyone who is discouraged and downcast, you are wondering what will become of your life. I want to speak to you. In the name of Jesus, you will have the last laugh in this life. Anyone under the sound of my voice appointed unto death, I declare may death pass over you. 
May death pass over you. You are blessed in the city. You are blessed in the country. You are blessed in Abuja. Blessed in Lagos. Blessed in America. Blessed in UK. All over Europe. All over Africa. Return as a sign and a wonder. Return as a testament of God's favor. In the name of Jesus. Let me take a minute and speak over all who have sown seeds, giving, standing with us. I just felt stirred in my heart to do that. People give. The things that you see us do, it is based on the givings, the faithful givings of God's people. And I just felt stirred tonight to pray over everyone who has given, not just here in Nigeria, but across the globe, UK, America, Canada, people have given for our meetings coming. People have given even in the house. People have sown into my life as a man of God. I stretch my hands. God is not a fraudster. God is not a scammer. He doesn't play games with people. In the name that is above all names, you have sown to this ground. It is good ground. Therefore, receive a hundredfold harvest. Therefore, receive a hundredfold harvest. A harvest of prosperity. A harvest of wisdom. A harvest of helpers. A harvest of joy. A harvest of help. In the name of Jesus. May you never do anything alone in your life. God will raise people to stand with you. To stand by you. To stand for you. In the name of Jesus. Quarter to shame. May God raise help us for you. Now let me speak over your spiritual life. Everything attacking your prayer life. Attacking your word study life. Attacking your zeal and your passion for spiritual things. It dies permanently right now. May your prayer life be fanned back to flames. May your word study life be fanned back to flames. May your passion for the house of God be fanned back to flames. May your appetite for spiritual things be fanned back to flames. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, I call you Beulah and Hepzibah. Beulah and Hepzibah. You are like a well-watered garden. I call you a wealthy place. An oasis springing possibilities. In the name of Jesus. You will not beg and you will not borrow. Yet you will not lack. In the name of Jesus. These hands that are lifted remain lifted forever. They will not go down. The Lord is your shepherd. He will guide you in paths of righteousness. He restores your soul. In the name of Jesus. Your enemies will not see your back. Your enemies will not see your face. Their plans will end as vanity. But as for you, the Lord is your lifter. He will lift your head. He will give you speed. No delay. No retrogression. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Advance. Progress. In destiny. And I pray for you. The kind of honor and favor you have never seen. This week. May God bring this as a witness to your life. Wave your hands to Jesus. Give him all the praise. Wave your hands to the King of Kings. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Now, I forgot to do this, but let me do this. I'm even yet to meet with them. I especially want to appreciate our team. They are part of the team organizing our conferences, some from UK, some from America. Just wave your hands in front here. Some of them arrived today. Give them a big God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, they are part of the team organizing a Sound of Revival conference. I want to make an altar call right now. Please, I want you to just be patient for a minute. 
for as long as I live and God gives me this opportunity, I will never cease to give one person an opportunity to come to Jesus. Because God desires that all men be saved and then to come to the saving knowledge of the truth. You are in this place and all through this meeting, the spirit of the living God began to nudge in your spirit that you need Jesus. Wherever you are, I want you to leave your seat and I'm going to ask you to come and stand here. Whether you are rededicating your life to Jesus or you are saying, Apostle, sincerely hearing you speak, the Spirit of God began to convict me. And I can say with all certainty that I need Jesus. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Wherever you are, boldly leave your seat and come and stand right before me here. Let's honor them as they come. There has to be someone who loves Jesus enough to heed to this call. If you are coming, come. Don't wait for anyone to come before you. Pick your bags, your Bibles, everything you came to church with and come to Jesus. All the overflows, you can move to your LED screens. Those outside do same. Those who are connecting from across the globe, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Koinonia, keep clapping as they come. Every one of these beautiful people is... Their price is the blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary Street. If you're coming, come quickly. You're still thinking about it. Here is a chance to make up your mind. Win that war once and for all. Apostle, I perceive that I'm a good person. I can't remember making any decision for Jesus, but I cannot say I'm a bad person. Your righteousness is unable to save you. This business of salvation is exclusively based on the finished work of the Son of the living God. So you come come you want to have the assurance of salvation join them i need thee oh i need thee every hour i need thee come bless me now my savior i come ladies and gentlemen thank you for this bold declaration thank you for making jesus lord of your life may i request that you lift your right hand high above your head and please say this after me say it sincerely from your heart unto jesus say lord jesus if you're joining them please come quickly say lord jesus tonight i declare that i love you with all my heart i declare that you are the son of the living god i declare that you are my savior you are my lord and you are my king i believe that you died for my sin i believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive your life into my spirit and i declare that i'm a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb from tonight and forever i am a child of god I go forward ever and backward never. The power to live a victorious life is mine forever. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious people. They have come declaring your lordship over their lives. And I declare based on the authority of God's word that your sins are forgiven. And the power to live a victorious Christian life is imparted upon you. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. I declare you to be the righteousness of God in Christ. And from today, you walk guilt-free in the name of Jesus. You go forward ever and backward never. Go from glory to glory. Experience the grace of God in all its dimensions. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, ladies and gentlemen. Please let me request that you just move to my right. That will be your left. There are counselors who will have a word with you just for a minute or two, and then you're back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. For one last time, God bless you, my friend. Thank you. Hallelujah. One last time before we wrap up, um, please let's have the bill for next week's meeting. So we're having... A very powerful time next week in this place hallelujah we'll be having shouts of victory it's going to be a time of prophecy and a time of uncensored worship we'll be having my dear friend and brother pastor nathaniel bassi together with terry mccalmond 
It's going to be a wonderful time of worship. Invite everyone around this city. Invite everyone around the world. Let's connect and experience grace, experience worship, and let God continue with us even as he started tonight in the name that is above all names. And remember, the ministry of ingathering is everyone's business. We're a global family and make sure that someone knows someone knows someone and gets to know this meeting and what Jesus is doing in the lives of people, even through your witness. More importantly, beyond inviting people, make sure that you become an extension of the Jesus that we represent. It is clear in this ministry, and as we always say, that Jesus revealed, Jesus glorified. Let that be clear through your life. Have you been blessed tonight? For one last time, I want us to please give Professor John Kennedy a big God bless you. Thank you for spending time with us. And then help me appreciate Reverend Edward also, all the way from Enugu. Thank you sincerely. And for everyone who has made it to this place, the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Please rise as we close for tonight. Lord, we thank you for grace. Thank you for enablement. Thank you for visitations. Thank you for impartations. Our lives would never be the same, not after this encounter. I pray in the, in the name of Jesus that as you depart from here, go in the glory. Go with the favor of God. Go with testimonies following you. Go with good news following you. You will return a sign and a wonder to the glory of the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Remember, after the grace, please decently just join the queue as you are led. The protocol, those who are collecting the form for the agro training, make sure you do that. I don't know how many forms are available, but once we exhaust 300, we may have to stop. I don't know how many forms are there. And then those who are writing their names for the support for business, you can just work with the instructions that will be given and then you'll be communicated in due course. For all those who are filling the 